are deep where living waters are known. The Lord has a will, and I have a need to follow that will, to humbly be still, to rest in
Good evening, let's stand together tonight. Jesus says. That's our Savior. All right, I'm going to need the lyrics up on the screen. My laptop's not working correctly right now. There we go. Here, sing with me. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Oh, you heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I alone will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care.
shame Stumbling toward the pit of hell's consuming flame By the powers of sin deluded and oppressed Hear the tender shepherd come to me and rest Come unto me sense of weakness brought distress within Christ will sanctify you if your claim is best in the Holy Spirit he will give you rest so come unto me I will give you rest take my oath upon you Here It's easy, and my burden's light. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for what Jesus does in our lives? Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, I'm going to try to fix this thing up here real quick. Why don't you go ahead and just go ahead and shake some hands and, and just welcome one another tonight in the name of the Lord. Go ahead. our seats you can remain standing or you can be seated whichever is easy for you right now but I want us to sing blessed are the poor for the kingdom is yours blessed when you mourn there's comfort in his arms blessed are the meek with the world at your feet blessed when it's righteousness that you seek it's beautiful Beautiful, like a city on a hill, lighting up the night for the glory of the Lord. Rise and shine, we will shine. Light of the world, we can't hide it. This beautiful light, it shines. City on a hill. Blessed when you're merciful, you find grace. Blessed are the pure, you'll see the face of God. Blessed are you making peace on earth. Blessed when you follow, even when it hurts, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Like a city on a hill, light. 
lighting up the night for the glory of the Lord. Rise and shine. We glory of the Lord rise and shine for the glory of the Lord rise and shine for the glory we become that light. That's how we become that city on the hill, by trusting, being anchored in his love and trusting God. Sing that again. I'm trusting in my king above. My soul is anchored in his love. I'm walking by my Savior's side. For he's my shepherd and my guide. Let Jesus come into your heart. A stream of joy and love in heart. Amen. Ah, oh, being anchored in that love, that gives us one great thing to look forward to, and that's a better place than this to live in with the Lord someday in glory. Amen? Amen. There is a home, a better home, where sin and death can never come. It lies beyond the starry sky, and I shall reach it by the Lord and come with me to live in peace eternally. The blessed Lord from day to day will guide your feet along the way. From endless death, he'll keep your soul if you to him will give control. I journey to Trust the Lord and come with me to live in peace 
eternally. Oh, hear his voice, it's called today. By trusting him, be saved today. Do it again. I journey to the better home where parting sad can never come. Oh, trust the Lord and come with me to live in peace eternally. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. You may be seated tonight. Welcome. It's good to see all of you here and uh, to be back on Sunday night. I, I know we've been out for the last three weeks, but I'm glad uh, you remembered where we're at on Sunday night. So uh, uh, you're back and I'm back and God's here. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us today. Uh, don't forget if you uh, didn't stop by and make sure that they'd march you in for tonight. Be sure and do that on the way out. Don't forget the announcements that are in the bulletin. And uh, a couple things going on this week. Our, our uh, small group, the Creative Crafts group, on Wednesday at 10. And then we've got that uh, funeral-wise pre-need service seminar here on Saturday at 10 o'clock. And uh, plan, I know the bulletin says the uh, uh, multi-purpose room but uh, for right now, just come in the main entrance, and we'll plan on in here because I, I don't know if they're going to need video or not. So just in case, uh, we can just meet in here. But that'll be at uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday. And uh, if uh, we didn't have it in the bullets in the insert, but last week you had an insert, and it kind of gave a lot of the subjects that are going to be covered, things that can help you and your family uh, when it's time to make some of those plans that we always kind of put off and we don't like to think about. But uh, there's some great things that this organization can show you and teach you, and uh, it'll be well worth your time. So that will be Saturday at 10 o'clock. It's all free, so you come, all right? And then thank you for your giving today. Of course, I don't know how much was given this morning, but I know that God will bless you for giving. And if you've got some extra that you could give tonight... I'm sure that, that uh, God will bless you for doing that as well. But thank you for your support. Let's do this one more time before we begin the word of God. These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of David. These are the days when he shall come riding on a cloud. Sing with me. These are the days of Elijah. Declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are a voice in the desert crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in the world. And we are the laborers in the vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord, behold he Like 
Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Give the Lord a good praise tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Jesus is coming. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to let our teenagers follow Sarah out tonight, and they're going to enjoy their class. And uh, I'm going to bring to you a message taken from the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. If you want to go there tonight. And uh, this morning I preached about birthing hostility and another word for hostility is being dissatisfied. And I talked about people being dissatisfied. Tonight though I'm going to turn it around and I want to talk about the sin of being satisfied. Now on the surface that may sound like, well then I'm supposed to be dissatisfied, but you just hold on tonight and you will understand the differences between the two messages. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 12, if you're there say a good amen. Here we go. Paul's writing, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. Let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. Thank you, Father, for your word. Speak to us. Let it be what we need tonight in our hearts. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Sometimes we like to use the line that says, Jesus satisfies. We use it in our song lyrics and even say it behind our pulpit. And while he does satisfy, and while he is everything that we need and want, he creates a constant dissatisfaction within the hearts of all who give their lives to Jesus Christ. The closer you get to him, the more you begin to compare yourself to him. And the more you compare yourself with him, the less satisfied you become with yourself and the more dissatisfied you will become. And the extent of your Christian growth will be in direct proportion to your dissatisfaction with yourself. And you will not improve unless you realize your need for improvement. In every growing venture, whether it be spiritual, religious, whether it be secular, there is a person somewhere who is not satisfied. A person who, when things are going smoothly, wants them to go smoother. In every growing and successful venture of every kind or of any kind, there is someone who, when they have given their all, they want more all. In every successful venture or enterprise, there is a man or a woman who, when he or she has done their best, they want a better best. He or she is never satisfied. 
There is in every successful venture someone who, when they are carrying the load limit, seeks a bigger limit. I'm talking about a a person who never reaches their goals. An individual, when he or she is doing all that they can do, wants to do more. In every successful venture, there is a guy or gal who you will not only find hard to satisfy, but impossible to satisfy. The good old boy bosses, they don't succeed much. And there is in every successful venture a man or woman who, when they have gone as far as they can go, seeks to go farther. In every successful venture, there's an individual who is not pleased when things are going well. There is a person to whom being second is a constant irritation. There is a man or woman who writes the book of ideas that other people read. And there's a strange kind of individual, a unique kind of individual, and you could say a misunderstood kind of individual. And yes, criticized by those who are not paying the price because he does pay the price. In every successful venture, there is an individual who does not let their success keep them from success. They're not satisfied with the good when they can have the best. In every successful venture, ladies and gentlemen, there's an individual that when the victory celebration is going on, They're alone planning the next victory celebration. There's a person in every successful venture who is all they can be that wants to be all they can be. And there's a person in every successful venture who does not look at how far they have come, but they look to see how far they have yet to go. If you want to be average, then this message is not for you. If you want to be normal, now would probably be a a good time to catch a nap. (laughs) But if there's anyone in here tonight that wants to be a success, then I want you to listen to what I have to say this evening. And I'm not advocating that, that everyone becomes a leader. Because when everyone becomes a leader, then you have anarchy. But what I'm saying tonight is all of us, whether you're a follower or a leader, you should be that person who never reaches your potential because there is no end to your potential. And this is what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, when he said, Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. But you might ask, well, didn't Jesus know that we couldn't be perfect as our Father in heaven? Didn't Jesus know that human perfection is beyond a human being's reach? Well, of course he did. So why did he tell us to be perfect just as our Father in heaven is perfect? Because he didn't want us to be satisfied. If we would stop comparing ourselves to some lazy sluggard and compare ourselves to Jesus, we'd be a lot less critical and a lot less boastful of ourselves. Church, do not compare yourself to someone below yourself. Compare yourself to someone above yourself. And if you ever compared yourself to, say, Peter, when he denied the Lord and tried to hide who he really was, then you compared yourself wrong. Instead, Compare yourself to Peter on the day that he stood up and preached on the day of Pentecost to thousands of people and 3,000 of them were saved and added to the church. Compare yourself to the best. And the great sin of satisfaction will destroy a church. It destroys preachers. It destroys businesses. It destroys students. All over America today, there are businesses that were started by men years ago who explored and they pioneered and they paved the way. They dug the trenches, they cleared the brush, they built the business, built the enterprise, they built the clientele. And those old-timers didn't play much, they worked hard. They built that business 
the old-fashioned way by hard work. To them, it was more fun to work than it was to play because that they knew that nobody succeeds by playing. And I, Sometimes I, I have got to wonder about the church of Jesus Christ. I wonder if what we see today is what the Lord had in mind when it comes to the church. Because people today are looking for a church that has all the activities. Young people are looking for all the fun stuff to do in church. And if their church isn't like the camp experience, then everything they experienced at camp just kind of goes out the door. And don't get me wrong, I love fun stuff and I enjoy playing whenever I can. But play will not make you successful. Churches, businesses, great lives, wonderful homes, those are not built by someone who has spent their life playing. And after the old timers built these businesses, they began to get older, they had to retire, and so the sons took over. But the younger generation, in many cases, did not have the same work ethics as their parents' generation did. And the businesses began to suffer until they disappear, and now we just see empty buildings. The difference was that the old man was never satisfied. The young man is satisfied. Have you ever wondered how great churches are built? Do you wonder why the great churches of the past were built by men like Spurgeon, who worked from morning till night? It, it is said that Spurgeon's church was not built by his preaching, although it's said that he might have been probably one of the greatest preachers of all time. But they say that his church was not built on his preaching. It is said that his church was a working church, a beehive of activity. And when he left the scene, then they began to flounder. Why? Because Spurgeon was never satisfied. Have you ever wondered why Dr. Young Hee Cho, who was in Korea for many, many years, who built a great church, started out with five people in a tent, but it gained momentum and it reached more than 830 thousand members it was the world's largest church which happened to be an assembly of God why because Dr. Cho was never satisfied it says that at one time he bought a newspaper and he put over 11 million dollars a year out of the church budget into that newspaper that was circulated just like the secular paper in the city of Seoul Korea and up to the time of his death in 2021 Dr. Cho was never satisfied. There was always a, a new venture to reach out to. And as the old hymn says, I'm, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. A miracle was built by a generation of people who had no social security, they had no welfare checks. They had no Uncle Sam for security. All they had was God Almighty. All they had was faith in the Bible and the God who wrote the Bible. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what built America. But today, America has become satisfied. America has replaced our God. Who is supposed to supply all our needs? Who is supposed to be our source? We have replaced him with the government supplying our needs. And God said, you shall have no other gods before you. Today we hear a lot of negative talk coming against those who claim to be a right-wing conservative. They label us the evil now. They, they, now they label us the evil mega crowd. And they say that's the problem with America. Listen, I am proud to be a mega conservative. I'm proud to believe in making America great again. And I will tell you that there needs to be more men and women of God stand behind pulpits and talk about values of our country and take a position on it according to God's Word. Too many, they want to stay away from it because they consider it voodoo. You know what I'm talking about? They don't want to offend anyone. But listen, America was not built by playboys. America was built by work boys. How many could give me an amen right here? Don't be quiet on me tonight. 
Jesus said, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. He was saying, never be satisfied. And I'll say this, ladies and gentlemen, it is a sin to be satisfied. The prophet Amos said, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. And even in today's poor economic times, most of us still have it pretty good, don't we? We drive a nice car. It's getting harder to put gas in that nice car, but we still have a car. We live in a nice home. Those who work, work an average of 8 to 10 hours a day, come home, have a nice dinner, watch a big screen television, go sleep in a nice comfortable bed, and we say, I have security. But you know the word security is one of the most overrated words there is. There was a day in this country that we would rather have freedom than security. But now we gladly give up our freedom so we can have security. It was dissatisfied people who built this country. It used to take months from the, for the news to go from New York to San Francisco by stagecoach. By the time that the people on the West Coast heard the news, the news was already history. But a man was not satisfied with month-old news, so he thought of a new way, and he got on a horse. And he rode that horse to the point of exhaustion, and then they'd get a fresh horse, and they rode that horse to the point of exhaustion, and by Pony Express, they dwindled the time that it took for the news to reach to there from months down to weeks. Still, man was not satisfied. So one day, a man sent the first telegram from Boston to Baltimore that read, What has God wrought? And man still wasn't satisfied. Until today, we can open, open up a cell phone and get instant news. But it all came about because of dissatisfaction. A man one day said at the bottom of Mount Everest, he looked at the top and he said, I'm not going to be satisfied until I climb to the highest peak in the world and place my flag. And he wasn't. And they said a mile could not be run in under four minutes. But a man said, I'll not be satisfied until I can run a mile in less than four minutes. And he did. And Jesus said that we're to be perfect. And that means that God's people are not to be satisfied with their spiritual growth until you're perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. And if you are satisfied with the spiritual level of your growth, then I would dare say you're not right with God. That you have committed the sin of being satisfied. And I believe that's what Paul meant when he said in Philippians 3.13, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. Say reaching forward. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And that word apprehended means I count not myself to have totally conquered all the ground that I'm supposed to conquer. And when Paul wrote this, he was an old man. He was also in prison, in solitary confinement. And in just a few days, his head would be put on the guillotine, and that blade would come down. Paul's life and his ministry was behind him, and he knew that. And yet he said, I count not myself to have apprehended. He was saying, I've got some more battles to win. I've got some more ground to conquer. I've got some more things to do. I've got some territory that needs to be explored. I've got some things that I am to do. I'm not satisfied today. And that's what Isaiah meant when he said of Jesus in Isaiah 53, 11, when he said, He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was our example. And we're supposed to be like Jesus, aren't we? And Jesus came to this earth as the Son of God, but he was not satisfied. He was born of the Virgin Mary, but that didn't satisfy him. Jesus led the perfect life, never said a sinful word, never committed a sinful deed. 
and yet he was not satisfied. He fed the hungry. He clothed the naked. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk and the blind to see. He spoke to the the storm-tossed sea and, and it became still and quiet, but he still wasn't satisfied. He walked the roads of Damascus, the sandy shores of Galilee, blessing the little children, and yet he wasn't satisfied. He caused demons to leave the bodies of people and threw them out, but he wasn't satisfied. He was wrongly tried, beaten, put to death, went to Calvary, hung on a cross, but he wasn't satisfied. Jesus wasn't satisfied until he he had finished his earthly mission and went back to heaven. And we shouldn't be satisfied either. Those of you in this room that teach and lead in this church, do not be satisfied with the way things are. Do not be satisfied with the status quo. To those who are not involved much, don't be satisfied with just coming to church on Sundays and sitting. Give me some people who are not satisfied with the way things are. Give me some Christian people who are not satisfied because there's always more that they can do. Always more than I should do. Always more I could do. Always more I should be. People who will say, I have yet, or I have not yet apprehended. Give me Christian people who will say, I'm not satisfied. As the psalmist said, until I awaken in your likeness. Church, this isn't the way for us to wear any crowns and be proud and boastful of what we've accomplished. This is the day we're supposed to take up our cross and follow Christ. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Say might. That means with everything you've got, for there's no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. And then Paul said in Ephesians 3, that he who would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So what does that all mean? The Bible is saying, whatsoever you do, do it with all your might. What your hand finds to do, Do it with all your might. And then pray, Lord, give me more might. Help my might to be stronger. Strengthen my might. And when he strengthens your might, then whatsoever you need to do, you do it with all your heart. And then you say, Lord, strengthen my might again. And if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you use what you've got. And God will pour into you his might and his strength. And if you use what God gives you, he will give you some more. And he'll give you something else. Listen, God's not going to waste his power on sluggards. God's not going to waste his power on lazy people. God's not going to waste his power on those who just sit on their behind. Amen? As long as there are souls going to hell, nobody ought to be satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I feel that there is more to do. I know sometimes it's easy to, it's easy to get frustrated with people. I told somebody today, I was referring to somebody who, you know, I've, I've kind of known him a little bit for a few years. He's been off, off and on and He's one of those individuals that will just zap everything out of you. And uh, I said, well, he's a soul. He's still a soul. I wish I could just, though, tweak him just a little bit. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But as long as there are people and souls, we should never be satisfied. I feel that I could do the things that I do better than what I do. I'm not satisfied until we start seeing Mesa, Arizona turned upside down by the power of God, flowing through New Life Assembly of God. I'm not satisfied with the status quo. And I call upon you, church, 
to diligence, to do your best. I, I call on you to look at where you have not gone, not where you've been. I call upon you to look at what you have not done. I call upon you to not look at the people inside this building, but look at the millions outside of this building. And ask God, Lord, what would you have me do? I, I, I call on you to not look at the ones who have given their heart to Jesus, but to look at those who have not yet given their heart to Jesus. Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. A little boy was out one day with his BB gun and he was shooting at the moon and a, can, a man came by and he said, son, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to hit the moon. I'm shooting the moon. And the man kind of chuckled. He said, don't you know you'll never hit the moon? That's a long ways away. And the little boy said, well, that may be true, mister, but I'm a heap a lot closer than you are. And I would say, woe unto you that are at ease in Zion. That's what David meant in Psalm 17, 15, when he said, As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. And I think it's okay to add there, and not until. I will not be satisfied until I awaken in your likeness. I, I want to tell you tonight, I'm not satisfied with my words. Sometimes, sometimes my words get out before I have a chance to shut the barn door. Amen? There have been times when I've said things that I wish I'd never said. I've hurt people. I've maimed and wounded by my words that I've spoken. And I've prayed, oh God, please forgive me. I'm afraid that jealousy has come out of these lips, envy has come out of these lips. I'm not satisfied with my word life. I ask you, are you? I'm not satisfied with my thoughts. Are you? What if at the most sacred part of this service we could turn the projector on and project not only what you thought during the week, but just what you thought while you were in service tonight. How many would be comfortable if your thoughts were projected up on this screen? Not me. Folks, the devil's after our thought life with all the advertising and the television and the movies and everything else. The sad thing is that sometimes these thoughts take on the shape of words and they get out before we can close the door. And I'm not satisfied with my thoughts and my words. Last of all, I am not satisfied with my witness. It's one thing for me to stand up here and point my finger at you and say, if you don't win souls, you're going to lose your power. If you don't win souls, you're disobedient. But sometimes I've been around people and I also have failed to mention Jesus to them. Is there anyone else here tonight that is dissatisfied? There are young people in our church that could be great but they have to learn to work and how to apply themselves. They have to do the homework. There are some Christians who are going to have to learn to live the disciplined life in an age where they don't preach like this anymore. I mean, you can go to a number of churches and you'll not hear messages like this. Pastors don't preach on commitment anymore. Today, society is just kind of do your own thing, just float around such the... Uh, you know, just kind of sucked the best out of this preacher in this church, and then when you get used to him and hear all of his sermons, then go to the next church and start all over. Listen, you don't take a city for God like that. This city will only be taken by people committing themselves to God and to one another. And I know that I'm preaching to people tonight who come to Sunday nights because you're committed to it. And I appreciate that, but it's more than being committed to Sunday night service. It's about being committed out there the other days of the week. And if there is anyone here tonight that's not satisfied with something in your life, then I want you to just bring it to the Lord in prayer tonight. 
get up and come to the altar and have a good conversation with God about it. And give your life completely over to Jesus and let him have his way in you. Don't be satisfied. I say, by the end of the year, I believe we're going to have 100 people on Sunday mornings, 100 people on Sunday nights at least, running consistently. Guess what? When we reach that 100, do you think I'm going to be satisfied? No. There'll be another 100 to add to that. We will not be satisfied until we get to heaven. But when we get to heaven, will we be satisfied with our reward? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe we won't get as much as what we think we're going to get. Because we became satisfied instead of living dissatisfied. Do you need to come? I'm going to come tonight. I know that we have prayer meeting before service. But I think that Sunday night services ought to end in prayer meeting too. Start with prayer meeting and end in prayer meeting. Look at that, this young man, first one into the altar tonight. What an example. I think we all should come down here and just seek God. Say, God, I don't want to be satisfied. I want to do more. I want to be more. I want to say more. I want to witness more, God. You just pour out the desires of your heart, and God will give you what you need to accomplish those desires when it comes to living for the kingdom. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, why don't you, if you're sitting next to somebody, why don't you just reach over and just pray for one another. Pray for one another tonight. If there's anybody here that you need prayer in your bodies, you're dealing with a situation, there's not a person in this room tonight that cannot pray for you, and God answers and hears and answers that prayer. So if you have a need, share that need, and I want everybody to be praying with somebody tonight. Just pray the power of God. Just believe when you pray and pray in Jesus' name. It'll happen. It'll happen. And just pray for people, pray for each other to become dissatisfied <laughs> and wanting to do more for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy God. Holy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This week when you go out and be about your daily business, whatever God puts before you, seek a way to be that light. Seek a way to mention Jesus in a conversation. Say, Lord, I want to do more. I want to be more. I want to be brighter. I want to do more for the kingdom. Become dissatisfied. Don't become lazy and satisfied. Just say, Lord, not satisfied until I can witness to one more soul. Not until I can do something else for you, Lord. And watch God move. Watch God work in you. We will not be satisfied until we get to heaven. Amen? God bless you. Let's stand and We'll be dismissed tonight. Just may the Lord bless all of you and keep you. Be blessed this week. Be a part of the uh, couple of events. You ladies on, on um, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Be, be back here in the multipurpose room and others. If you'd like to come Saturday uh, and just see what you might be able to learn. And you might be able to take home some information that will help you to kind of make things easier for that certain time in your life, preparing for death, helping your families be prepared for what may happen. So that'll be Saturday, and then of course we'll be back here Sunday, all right? So until then, may God bless all of you and keep you. May you just 
make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and may these boys learn to just listen and pay attention to the pastor when he's talking, and, and uh, may they not be satisfied until they become as spiritual and as wise as they can get in Jesus' name. Amen? <laughs> Amen. God bless. Good night.